Uh, okay, awesome. Well, again, thanks, thanks so much for having me, everyone, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to chat today. As Rob mentioned, uh, my name is Alexia Lewis. I'm the account rep here at Duo Cisco, um, and as you can see at the bottom are the, the patches that I cover. And so for today, I want to talk, um, you know, of course, about multi-factor authentication, where Duo plays in that, um, why it's important, and hopefully today leave with the understanding of, hey, if you have an MFA solution, how you can make it better, some areas is that we can we can build on that and if you don't have an mfa solution right now of you know what direction this can help take you and maybe what are some key things that we should evaluate and look at to see how we can do that um, afterwards after the call please feel free to ping me I, i'll put my contact information would love to have you know more in-depth conversation um, if you are in any of these territories and if not happy to connect you with the rep that will be best suited for that um, but one other housekeeping um, uh, ping here is if you do have any questions, please feel free to ping them in the chat as we go. I'll take a couple of pauses in between just to see if we have any, um, because I know everyone is muted. Um, but with that being said, we can kind of, you know, just jump right in a little bit about Duo. Um, so we've been around since 2009 to, as you know, provide a best in class multi-factor authentication. Uh, we were acquired by Cisco a little over three years ago. And I like to show this slide because we are truly a loved company. Um, and I think that's kind of a weird thing to say when we're talking about security, um, but it's true both on the IT team perspective, but also the end user perspective. Um, not many security tools and, and functions are always you know, in the hands of your end users. In this case, Duo is literally in our pockets. And so the fact that you know people see it non-technical people see it as a really easy and you know lovable tool that i think says a lot about duo um but you know the real reason why we're here is you know why is there a need for duo and so to better really understand of you know why you should have duo or why you should improve your your uh mfa uh, environment um we have to really understand you know how duo came to be and, and really understand the, the business need for this and so in order to do that, we want to take a step back and, and look at the traditional workplace. Um, and I'm, you know, you can see by <laughs> hopefully my face that I'm not super tenured, but I know I understand, you know, where the space has gone from. And the traditional workplace is security used to be a much simpler exercise. Everything was trusted on site, protected by our firewall. And simply, we just know that this isn't really how things work anymore, right? We're talking a lot about cloud applications, BYOD, people using personal devices to access really critical work applications, contractors coming in and out of your environment. And then, of course, in light of more recent events, a huge surge in the remote workforce. So this is all really transforming how we do business and, of course, how IT and security teams manage this environment. So we really need to think about security for this new model where, you know, the traditional network concept is essentially obsolete. Um, and a lot can result from this. One of the biggest things that Duo addresses is, of course, the increase in breaches. So we're seeing that security tools are going up, IT teams are beefing up their environments, but the amount of breaches happening are still staying consistent, if not growing year over year. Um, and the reason for that is more breaches are occurring because of the cause of the breach has changed, right? It used to be that attackers would compromise servers, applications, databases, and the same way that technology advanced, so did the hackers, so did the attackers. They started to realize that going after end user credentials, um, hijacking their access to corporate applications was a far easier route to take. Um, it was essentially low hanging fruit, which I know is a really bad thing to say, but it's true. Um, attackers are stealing user credentials and compromising the devices um, a lot of the time through just like mass phishing attempts. So with that, they have the ability to move laterally within the organization and reach those crown jewel applications. So again, even though security teams are beefing up security, are working towards you know building a more secure environment, um, it's still a major shift in the threat landscape and organizations are struggling. They're struggling to keep up, not really sure how to enable you know, their end users to be more secure about their credentials, to protect their applications. 
And so what Duo does specifically to address this? Um, first is we provide a best-in-class MFA or multi-factor authentication to verify users, as well as gather health information about the actual devices or our cell phones that are accessing these applications um, before going through MFA. And so if you're familiar or heard about um, the Zero Trust framework or approach, it essentially means that, you know, we're not going to trust anyone or anything before it's been verified, before it's been validated, um, and, and in order to actually get access to these applications. So this is a framework that I think if you haven't heard about it before, you'll start to hear it more often. Um, it is actually something that more recently our federal government released, you know, a, a plan, a 30, 60, 90, 180 day plan as to how they're actually going to get to this framework. Um, and so what that means for organizations, uh, mostly on the Fed side, but any agency that works even indirectly with the DOD will have to comply with this. And one of the first things in order to be compliant, as you can see with that zero trust framework, is having an MFA solution in place. So when we get to the demo, we'll cover a little bit about how kind of we achieve this. Um, but just know that with Duo, it's all very simple in the sense that no hardware deployment, no agents on the devices, and making sure that, you know, you can support any environment. So mobile, PCs, Macs, on-prem, cloud, maybe a hybrid environment, um, in order to make sure that this is an easy to use tool that, you know, you can kind of jump in right in and be compliant. So to drill down a little bit on a couple of these, really simply, let's look at MFA. It seems super straightforward and it is, um, but a really easy way to remember it is just something that you know and something that you have, right? So when we think about something you know, that's gonna be your primary authentication or primary verification, which is gonna be your password, something hopefully only you know. Um, and then after that, it's something that you have. So in most often the cases like your cell phone where you're getting that second factor authentication could also be a token. Um, but the idea here is separating that something that you know and something that you have. Only then can you have achieved that multi-factor authentication. And so again, super straightforward, but now that you've verified who you say you are, then we can look at actually the device that you're using. And so why is this important, right? I've already authenticated I am who I say I am. But as we mentioned a little bit earlier is that attackers realize also it's incredibly easy to compromise devices that are may say maybe like running out of date versions of OS, have plugins, or maybe it's as simple as like don't have screen lock enabled. Um, we, I've heard horror stories about, you know, CEOs leaving their laptops without a screen in open airport. Um, and this is the CEO, right? They have all the keys to the kingdom. So um, just having these, you know, barriers here or, or lack thereof is, is a really easy way for attackers to come in and compromise the device and be able to, again, move laterally towards these critical applications. Um, Along that same thread, what we see a lot with admin teams is that they don't actually have eyes to see this, right? How am I supposed to know if my end users have something as simple as screen lock enabled? Um, and if you're in that same environment, you know, don't feel like you're alone. We see that about 57 roughly percent of our prospects um, have said that they have no visibility into the devices accessing, again, the most critical applications. And so it becomes extremely difficult exercise to know, you know, how do I protect it if I don't even know it's in my environment? So it goes to say that, you know, we really need to know that a device actually exists before we can figure out how to protect it, how to manage it and make sure that it is up to date. And so some things that, you know, Duo comes into play here with is just giving you greater insight to helping you answer certain questions like, you know, what devices are in my network? Um, are they personal or are they corporate devices? Are they, you know, do they have, uh, are they up to date? Is Java up to date? Is OS up to date? These kinds of questions allow you to a, better understand, you know, how, you know, what kind of hygiene my end users have um, and be able to put parameters around there to say, hey, these are the areas that um, are really vulnerable, or maybe these are the teams that just have no security hygiene. We really need to beef up security in this area. And note that we wanna do this all again without an agent, 
one of the big things that we're going to talk about is just ease of use, both on the IT team, but also on the end user, making sure that, again, this is not a point of friction, but giving you the insight that you need to stay compliant. So this is all great. I'll take a pause here and say that, you know, I talk to IT directors, CTOs, sysadmin teams day in and day out. And, you know, giving this pitch is very easy. The value is there. I don't need to, you know, don't need to drill too hard into that. Um, but as it is often what, you know, keeps security teams up at night, but sometimes selling it up, right? Having that conversation with the CEO that maybe doesn't come from a technical background, or maybe your end users who don't want to have certain parameters in their environment. How do we make this a value for them as well? And how do we make this a value to see that, hey, adding an additional step to your workflow is really critical, again, without being a point of friction. So in order to do that, first, we have to look at compliance requirements, everyone's favorite topic. Um, and I do say that sarcastically, almost because there's so much gray area around here of, you know, I have tons of IT directors that come and say, like, we think we need to be compliant here. It's kind of gray. And the matter of the fact is, is many bodies of compliance are moving from a place of making MFA a best practice, maybe a great recommendation to a mandatory piece of their security infrastructure. Um, and so, of course, this raises a lot of, you know, flags of to say, do we have these things in place? Do we have the keys to the door in place? Um, and, and compliance centers are not only asking for MFA, but they're also asking for, you know, reports and logs of the authentications give again, more insight into the devices, what's accessing, what's happening, when, and where are they coming from? Um, and so of course this becomes just a, a greater priority to put on, on your desk as, as, you know, an IT director or CTO to manage. In addition to these bodies of compliance taking that shift, um, we're also seeing cybersecurity coverage take that shift as well. So um, first is, you know, having MFA immediately will reduce your insurance costs. Um, secondly, is that some regions and industries are actually um, stopping renewal insurance. So you can't actually renew your insurance until you have an MFA solution in place. Um, and I and I say, you know, I mentioned this not to scare anyone, but to say maybe this is an opportunity. Again, I want everyone to leave today thinking, how do we make this plan a little bit better? How do we take that next step? And I think this is a great area to say, all right, you know, what are we do for cyber insurance? Do we have it in place right now? Um, what are some potential changes so that they're not a surprise when it does come to that renewal time? Um, think about it the same way as, you know, your auto insurance expects you to wear seatbelts. Your home insurance expects you to lock your door before you leave. Same way of cybersecurity insurance will expect that you have MFA on all your users, not just your admin team, before they're going to give you that protection. So some things to leave with today. If it's anything, it's going to be this piece. And again, happy to chat more afterwards about um, maybe specifically certain compliance requirements that you and your team are facing. And so with that same thread of, you know, selling this internally, making sure that this is something all your users are willing to adopt. Two key things we're always going to look at with Duo is, of course, security, best in class and ease of use. And so the first ease of use is going to be on you as an admin security team to say, hey, you know, Duo is essentially app agnostic or integration agnostic as we do have the broadest coverage of all applications. Um, and, you know, a couple of, of points on this slide is some of these companies also fall into a competitor uh, territory potentially. Um, and that's okay. We want you to protect the competitors as well. Um, the idea here is making this as easy as possible for you to really quickly implement as well as upkeep. Um, I always joke that, you know, we have an amazing uh, uh, customer support team. But it's really hard to sell that as a package when Duo makes it so easy for you to, you know, quickly adopt and implement. Um, but the key here is, again, making sure that regardless of your environment, again, cloud, on-prem, hybrid, maybe in a transition phase, that Duo can come in, sit, and make this ultimately a very, like, seamless and consistent experience, um, which is something that is always a struggle, of course, when you put in something so widely based like this. The next piece, of course, is going to be on your end users. Um, a lot of your end users, like myself, are not super technical. I'm a salesperson at the end of the day. 
and selling it and saying, hey, this is, you know, you will have to add a, a, a step every day, at least in your morning before you go into your single sign on. Um, and so making sure that this is an easy piece to adopt. Um, and so how we do that is, of course, a really great, you know, UI, but also making sure that however your end users want to authenticate, um, there is an option for them there. However many devices a user might have, that's not that's not a limiting factor. Um, one use case that I come up with a lot is, you know, I work a lot with manufacturers. And so if they're looking to protect their local consoles, sometimes their end users can't actually have a device on them, whether it's a wearable or an iPhone, making sure that those users also have a token that they can use there. Um, so again, giving IT teams and their end users that flexibility to make MFA an added security step, but not one of friction. Well, awesome. Everyone can still see um, my uh, screen up here, a new screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and so something I like to note about this, we'll run through just a couple of use cases, but note that this is a public page. I would highly, highly recommend um, navigating to it later so you can walk through the different use cases. Um, and again, this is a good tool just to better understand how do works, but also as a tool to sell us internally to say, let's look at how easy this really is. And so the first one I'm going to click is just that classic duo push. So I'll walk through it a couple of times and highlight some things. Um, and apologies if this is, you know, repetitive for anyone who already has duo or, or has looked at this before. Um, but really quickly, again, not a super technical person. I'm going to come into my Outlook, put in my email and password. Right away, my um, iframe comes up. I'm going to click duo push. This is what comes up on my phone. I'm going to unlock my screen. Take a quick scan to say, yep, this looks like me and I'm in. So again, super easy. This took probably two and a half seconds. I'm going to go back in that just to highlight a couple things. Again, this is the piece of this is what I know part of MFA. And in this iframe right here, this is where we're doing the scan to say, all right, you know, this device is clean. It's healthy. It's up to the policies that we've set. Let's go ahead and prompt them with that push. As you can see, I have a few options, right? I have that do a classic push, which is again, the easiest one to use. I also have a YubiKey option, you know, passcode if I want them to call me. And then I also have the option to say, which device do I have with me right now? Do I want to authenticate from? Um, and in this case, again, just clicking that iPhone, the duo push. Now say I got prompted with this in the middle of the night. I wasn't looking to get into my Outlook, but this came up. I can say, oh, maybe this was an accident. I tried to get in um, and I was half asleep. Or I can say, hey, yeah, I really didn't prompt this. Or maybe this location is not where I'm at. I can let my IT team know by saying, hey, this is fraudulent, in which case they'll automatically be denied. And you as an IT team will be notified to say, was it an accident? Or should we further investigate whether someone did get a hold of my primary credentials, the thing that I know, but of course got locked out at that second factor. And then in this case, or the next instance I want to show is talking about that, that health piece, right? So if I go back here, I can look at that same workflow. I'm going to come into my Outlook, put in what I know, my password. Same iframe comes up, but now I have this orange banner. And so, again, not technical. Don't really know what this means. It's telling me my browser's out of date. Let's go ahead and see what that says. And it looks like in this case, it's Firefox. We'll actually link it to your end users to say, hey, here are the steps that you need to take in order to get Firefox um, back up to date or in compliance. And in this case, I still have time. It's an orange banner. I can go ahead and skip um, and continue with my two-factor authentication. Say I just don't have time today. I really need to get into my email. But in the case that maybe I've waited a little bit too long, I've waited past that 20 day mark, this banner will actually turn red like we saw previously and I'll be blocked. And so again, this is these are the kinds of policies and, and the, when we talk about the, the health of devices and, and those endpoints and, and where your users are navigating, that's gonna be up to you to put those parameters. So in this case, my team gave me 20 days to get this up to date. After that 20, you know, first day, I'm gonna be locked out. Um, and the point here is to say this is still super easy, again, even for your not technical users to be able to 
walk through these steps and very quickly identify what they need to do. And again, putting a little bit of that ownership on your end users to stay in compliance. So we'll uh, hand over to Patrick Day, our Director of Client Services, to, uh, to make some comments and close out the call. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, great, thanks, Alexia, I appreciate it. Uh, just a couple quick comments, um, maybe at a very high level that around MFA and Zags, I would say position and or philosophy in that it, um, you know, the world is a much dangerous place, whether we like it or not. We see that every day, whether it's a pipeline attack or um, the solar winds compromise, et cetera. And so we we now view uh, MFA in the same way that most of the world probably views antivirus. It's just a requirement, it's just what you do. And um, we have a saying that we share with clients, it's MFA everywhere. Uh, obviously the use cases are unique depending on the environment. But if you adopt that philosophy and that approach when you go into these uh, situations or and or when you're talking to your either your C-suite or your board or your executive team, um, when you position it like that, we feel that it's um, it lands very well. Uh, and, you know, look, MFA today has become a consumerized type product. We, we use it every day, whether it's for our personal banking investment accounts. Uh, whatever you do online these days, there's a code somehow that comes to you in the second form of authentication. So um, take it um, as a uh, probably just more of a, a thought that uh, the world is a, um, a different place than it was just obviously uh, 14 months ago. And so this, you know, this, a technology like this really helps us add that layer of protection that um, from what we see with our clients, most organizations still need. Um, I don't see any more questions, Rob, so I'll just close with um, I know we've got a, a contact uh, we need to an action reach out to Seth if anybody else is interested in talking further at a deeper level beyond this call since we're out of time happy to uh, facilitate that um, you don't have my contact info but you can reach out to Rob or I'm sure if you pinged Alexia she would get it to us eventually so feel free and with that I'll pass it back to Rob thanks.